We have no extraordinary items. So now moving to agenda number eight, which is a presentation from Eden Park Trust Board. And to introduce the item, I welcome first our group treasurer, John Bishop, to introduce the item before handing over to Eden Park. Uh, look, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so this is one of the regular updates from the Eden Park Trust Board. Um, I'll take the council report as read. Uh, it gives an update on the progress of the committee resolutions from 2019, and I'll be happy to take any questions uh, at the end of this item. Uh, but now I'll hand over to, to Brett, uh, Nick and Vicky from the Eden Park Trust Board to run through the presentation. So I think over to you, Nick. Excuse me, uh, John, uh, Doug Mackay here. Vicky uh, Salmon is unfortunately not able to make it today, so I am here. And Madam Chair, is it all right if I start with just a very quick introduction? Absolutely. Welcome. Thank you very much. Well, kia ora tato, tēnā koe and morena all. It is wonderful to be here and update you. Um, as we uh, agreed three years ago, we should and we would. Um, I'd just like to note that it is three years since your generous grant support for the urgent capex and asset management projects that we talked to you about for the park back then. And since then, of course, it's been very difficult times for us all, but you of all people know that better than most. Um, I also see, um, if you haven't picked it up in the media, Wellington Stadium has requested today, uh, this week, uh, an urgent $3 million for OPEX uh, funding support from the Wellington Council. But I'd just like to highlight, if anyone thought there was a parallel there with us, the parallel is we're all under financial pressure, including Council. Um, but at Eden Park, we are managing our OPEX um, uh, budgets for now, um, but it's the deferred maintenance and another round of CAPEX support that is a conversation we would like to start with the committee today once we've um, delivered our update presentation. We did appreciate Jim and Peter visiting and walking the park recently with Nick and I to see firsthand the challenges of neglected and tired assets which we are unable to fund via our depreciation. Um, Nick and Brett will update you uh, as to the current status and lead off a conversation about our future funding needs, if that's okay, Madam Chair. Absolutely, thank you. Nick or Brett, it's over to you. Nick, can you hear us? Uh, yeah, yeah Tenakoto Kator, uh, thank you for your time this morning. And uh, I'm going to pass over to Brett, who will uh, cover off on the first slide and then I'll take over the presentation. I'll just wait for that slide to come up. There we are. Uh, kia ora and good morning, everybody. Um, two sets of figures there. Firstly, um, a recap on our annual report result. Uh, our uh, balance date was 31 October last year, so we were close to the end of the financial year when we presented to you in October, and I believe that we gave you uh, a forecast indicating uh, how those results uh, were looking, and it was a strong result for the year. Um, we've achieved profit or depreciation of $5.3 million, um, despite the fact there were COVID lockdowns in the year. We were fortuitous um, in their timing, uh, and we obviously managed to um, host the uh, 660 concert and extremely fortuitous to be able to host two rugby test matches uh, and the completion of the Super Rugby Trans-Tasman Series with a final at Eden Park. So um, it, it was a good uh, result overall, despite the difficulties. Uh, and through that time, we were preparing our 2022 budgets. So uh, with the lockdown beginning on the 17th of August, um, we were faced with the uncertainty of not knowing how long that would last, what the consequences would be. So we budgeted uh, fairly conservatively for the 2022 financial year uh, based on the um, uh, the events that we had booked, but without certainty that they would take place. Um, and first, 
through the first three months of the financial year, uh, there was little activity um, uh, booked or, in fact, played at the park. Uh, and we now, of course, face the uncertainty uh, of, of what lies ahead of us. We've hosted one Super Rugby game um, under the restrictions of 100-person pods. Uh, there's the Women's Rugby World uh, Cricket World Cup coming up this weekend before restricted crowds. Um, so on that basis, um, we'll, we, we'll leave you with the budget numbers, but there's, there are too many scenarios to predict exactly where um, we will go with respect to forecasting in the current financial year. And I'll leave it for Nick to uh, talk through some of those implications. Thank you. Thank you, Brett, and thank you again, councillors, for the opportunity today. Um, this has been the most challenging period uh, of the COVID pandemic for Eden Park Trust and for Stadia across the world. Uh, one thing that we have seen is uh, stadiums are the first to close and the last to reopen. And uh, the government restrictions that have been uh, implemented implemented on Stadia uh, means it's had a material impact on Eden Park Trust and continues to do so over the next four months. Brett just touched on um, this weekend, we have uh, the delayed or deferred uh, Women's Cricket World Cup uh, with restrictions of 20% 20, 20 of our capacity um, and no crowds at major events with Super Rugby being transferred down to Queenstown and then our first Super Rugby fixture uh, at the park where 12 pods of 100 was implemented with 602 patrons attending. Uh, for that reason, uh, there was no catering services implemented and uh, minimal revenue um, derived from the event for Eden Park Trust. Uh, another challenge has been the postponement due to the uncertainty around um, con content. Um, we weren't able to access uh, the government event fund and, uh, and that is seen 660 push out and we'll talk to that on uh, some following slides. In relation to our fixed cost, it was reported in previous um, council meetings and, and within our annual report of approximately 500k per month in fixed costs. And, uh, and that is being something that we've had to fund through our, uh, our debt. Uh, over 95% um, reduction in our function conference, tourism, um, our experienced business streams, and we are still awaiting confirmation of the two All Blacks tests later this year. Uh, this year, we had no international cricket scheduled in Auckland due to COVID restrictions that also added additional burden to our stadium membership. In relation to the events and the rescheduling events, it's an important note to factor is that not only have we lost that revenue for past or current financial years, but the rescheduling of those events means that um, it has created some congestion in the funnel of activity for later in the year and early next year, meaning that um, potential events that would have been held at Eden Park are now either not coming to Tamaki Makoto or indeed uh, going to alternate venues. I mentioned the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup. Um, as everyone is aware, that has been held this weekend and I do encourage all councillors, if they have the opportunity, there are still tickets available uh, for this weekend, whether it be the Australian India fixture on Saturday at 2 p.m. or on Sunday, the White Ferns versus England at 11 o'clock. The Rugby World Cup, um, we've worked with New Zealand Rugby to ensure that the event was held in Aotearoa and, uh, and we're very proud to have been able to secure the three Women's World Cups over the next now two years. However, that takes out the venue for close to an eight week period. 660 I mentioned was scheduled for 9 April. It's hard to believe that it's almost 12 months since that inaugural concert. And unfortunately, we haven't been able to host the events and that has had a cumulative effect on our operations, but also our full-time and casual workforce with a rescheduled date for now November 19, uh, later this year. Tamatati, um, an event that comes to Aotearoa, sorry, to Tamaki Makoto once every 20 years. Uh, we've had two postponements, but we're very proud that that event will continue and will be held, subject to obviously alert levels 
uh, in February 2023 at our national stadium. With regard to grant funding, uh, we're on track uh, and have been working with council officers around the 9.8 million. And I reiterate our chairman's comments earlier that without this funding, we would not have been able to attract the event calendar that we have uh, for the city and for the stadium and create the employment opportunities for not only at the venue, but also within um, the local community. Uh, we had approximately $1 million of that um, funding to be spent between now and the 30th uh, of June and those projects uh, have commenced and um, we will ensure that they are completed by um, the required dates. With regard to grant funding, um, the Trust doesn't have the capacity to fund future capital projects through debt. Uh, we are in, currently in discussions with Auckland Unlimited along with Sport New Zealand, FIFA and MB uh, for funding for the FIFA Women's World Cup. Uh, trustees are particularly nervous around that event. Um, we don't want to be in a situation uh, similar to that of the Rugby World Cup, whereby there was a debt legacy arising um, and an entrance bill um, from hosting a World Cup event. In relation to the EY report that Council um, commissioned some, some years back now, um, there is a 10-year program of $62.8 million worth of required capex for the park, and as it is currently, um, that remains unfunded. Uh, we have been working with council officers, and I'd like to acknowledge both Jim and Peter for their efforts today, and in, in accordance with advice received, uh, we will be making a submission to council uh, in relation to the annual council's budgeting process. I just uh, again want to reiterate the importance of the FIFA Women's World Cup. This is a genuine opportunity for gender equality in sport. And um, we look uh, in the past week, we've seen International Women's Day, and uh, I'm very proud as a father of two Kiwis, um, two Kiwi girls, to be in a situation where Eden Park, uh, Tamiki Makoto, and Aotearoa will host those three Women's World Cups including the nine FIFA Women's World Cup matches in 2023. Um, without Eden Park um, and our capacity, um, those events would not have been able to be secured for the city and for the country. And it is an important note that uh, a number of World Cup events have the requirement uh, for 50,000 seat capacity. I wanted to touch on um, the last six months just to give a flavour of some of the areas that the park has been focused on um, due to the downturn with um, the activities thanks to the implications of COVID. We have implemented a new three-year strategic plan and added two new priorities that include honouring and implementing a Māori strategy and fostering equality and inclusion through our actions and events. And our three-year strategic, three strategic strategy has an alignment with Auckland Council in terms of their priorities, and we see ourselves as um, a vital asset for Auckland in able to, being able to deliver in accordance with a number of um, Auckland City's priorities. Our target is to emerge stronger again following the um, pandemic, and we know that we can play an important role for the city as we rebuild confidence. Uh, I wanted to touch on a couple of initiatives that are featured in the slide that you are, are looking at currently. Um, in terms of our climate and waste minimisation, we've been working with um, the Morningside Urban Market Garden to implement now our second site, whereby um, refugee women are learning um, the skills um, required to be able to set up a business, um, grow various uh, products and then sell to the local community. Uh, we're very proud that that initiative came from an introduction from a local resident uh, in Remus Avenue and now we're in a situation where we have our second site on um, the park's footprint. Um, that site now sees community composting, um, e-waste collection, organic mulch, um, being distributed from restaurants and cafes in the area, and also all stadium food scraps get composted on site 
um, as part of our commitment uh, to address some of the challenges with climate action and climate change. In relation to climate change, I wanted to touch on um, the announcement from central government around light rail down Sandringham Road. That connecting with uh, CRL into Kingsland makes um, public transport uh, two uh, very viable alternatives for people to get their way to and from the park. And we see now over 60% of patrons adopting public transport to get to the venue. Uh, in terms of uh, our ongoing commitment to recycling rubbish and uh, our food scraps, um, we have mandated to our hirers, and it was something that um, was important in us getting well certification, the first venue in um, Australasia to get well certification, that uh, all our packaging on event days now in our retail outlets is compostable. Um, we have encouraged our hirers to eliminate um, single use uh, promotional products, and I do challenge everyone um, not to wear a KFC bucket on their head uh, when cricket is at Eden Park. Um, they go straight to landfill. Um, in terms of um, the asset and the community activity, um, very proud and thank you to those councillors who did attend um, our Māori-driven um, vaccination event on the park. Um, it was a campaign that then rolled out throughout Tamaki Makoto and in alignment with um, Ngāti Whātua Oraki. And um, it was great to see um, so many people coming, getting vaccinated and assisting with us reopening um, the city and the economy. Uh, also, uh, Councillor Darby and Councillor Hills um, like to acknowledge um, your sharing um, of our messaging um, and the city's messaging around the support um, and, uh, and in response to um, what has transpired in uh, the Ukraine and, uh, and the world certainly did um, see and, and we had over 380,000 shares and views um, of the imagery of Eden Park being lit up in support of the Ukraine. Um, we did put on an essential workers um, super bash game on the number one uh, to acknowledge um, some of uh, the workers around town and, and have some cricket content on the number one. And um, Katie Perkins, one of uh, the Auckland cricket players and also one of our police officers in Tamika Makoto um, had a, a very, she said it was one of her most memorable innings by playing on the number one. We have tried to keep relevant through this part um, and ensure that our partners, and I do want to acknowledge our partners, that have supported us through um, this challenging period. Without our partners, we would not have been able to keep the doors open. And um, they've been wonderful. And initiatives like uh, the, uh, the Lake Taupo Hole-in-One or the Super Dulux Super Bash with the support of partners like Qatar, Airways and Dual Lux has meant um, we have been able to have some activity here um, with the 100 cap. Uh, a focus over the next six months for the park will be to ensure that we um, do look at our greenhouse gas emissions, working with our hirers and aligning with New Zealand's strategy um, to, to reach a net zero carbon uh, by 2050. Um, the FIFA Women's World Cup has a focus in this space and uh, and our facility is uh, very much committed to reusing, um, repurposing um, our assets, not only as a strategic asset for the country, but also a community asset for Auckland. So that does include um, ensuring that people do adopt uh, public transport coming to our events. And as I mentioned, um, that continues to grow. I touch on um, just this last slide, and I, I'm not going to read it word by word, um, but I do just want to um, reflect on the last six months and the red traffic light system, what it's meant for our business, but also uh, for so many of the local businesses in the area. Um, to, to be in a position where we employ 3,000 people on a sellout event day, for those 3,000 people not to have been able to be in, in, able to engage with our stadium um, as being something that has been heartbreaking uh, to management, but also to many of those staff. Um, and we know the role that events play, uh, the escapism that we provide to the city. And I think yesterday's announcement around Ed Sheeran um, and the response that we've had in terms of people having something to look forward to. Um, our caterer currently 
uh, as seeing over 230,000 a month being lost um, as a family business, that's challenging, uh, but no, no different to cafes, restaurants, bars, or businesses that have been affected. Um, we do have a strategy to emerge stronger again, uh, but that emerge stronger strategy will need the support of Auckland Council, and we look forward to working with Auckland Council uh, to continue to deliver outcomes uh, for the city. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, is there anything that do you want to add, Doug? No, thank you, Madam Chair. No. Look, that was a very compelling uh, presentation. Thank you. I'll now open for questions, and my first question is from Councillor Walker. Sure, thanks. Uh, thanks, Desley. Could I ask uh, Sandra to just put up the slide? Um, it, it was the one titled um, Future Grant Funding, I think, um, about third from the end. That's there you go, Councillor Walker. That, that, that's it, sure, sure. So uh, I've, I've got a couple of questions, Madam Chair, um, and the first question is is just around the issue that you raised there um uh around uh the grant funding that you've had and obviously that ties in with the 10-year program that ey um identified um, that report is i'd suggest somewhat out of date now it's 2019 uh it was i think uh pre pre-covid and obviously a lot of things have moved since then. Do you think that that report um, needs to be re-looked at, Nick? And would there be some merit in that? Thank you for the question, Councillor Walker. Um, and there was 14 uh, areas identified within uh, the CapEx requirements in the report uh, that EY prepared. But there was also um, a number of high risks identified. Um, those risks remain. Uh, whether it be CapEx requirements, debt levels, or indeed the unitary plan. Um, so I do think the report is still relevant, but there is an opportunity for that to be updated uh, with the assistance of the park. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Nick. Uh, the other question I've got uh, really just goes to the uh, situation going forward. I I gave myself a, a refresh the other day, and I looked at the um, at the report that you gave us last time. And of course, um, at the time, you'd you'd featured as um, Stadium of the Year um, globally. Um, you'd featured in the New York Times um, international um, exposure that, if you were buying it, would have been in the tens of millions. And obviously, it put New Zealand on the map. So. My my question is is around the role that Eden Park can place in showcasing Auckland, showcasing New Zealand against a background where we are going to have an incredibly urgent and vital requirement to put New Zealand tourism back on the map, and and what role Eden Park could play in that. Quite obviously, there's a relationship between that and your capital funding. Um, going forward in order to host some of these significant um, events. So I'd, I'd welcome your, your comment around that question as it goes to your ability to um, bounce back and um, showcase Auckland. Thanks for the question. Um, I was liaising last night with the CEO of uh, Tourism New Zealand. Um, there's no question our event calendar over the next 12 months can contribute to brand New Zealand. And um, we've seen that in the past. And uh, even looking at uh, the FIFA Women's World Cup, uh, the numbers that are projected to travel with teams um, are three times that of a Rugby World Cup in 2011. Um, however, there is a need uh, to be able to maintain the asset and uh, we have been in a situation where due to the um, implications on our operations, a number of uh, critical uh, maintenance requirements have been deferred and put us in a situation where the asset isn't fit for purpose um, for those pending um, events. And um, we, we feel that um, the calendar over the next 12 months 
um, will be um, probably the best ever for the stadium. Uh, when you look at the FIFA Women's World Cup, the Rugby World Cup, um, the concerts that we've spoken to, and uh, our rugby and cricket content, but not forgetting uh, New Zealand's equivalent to the Edinburgh Tattoo. To Martatini, um, every Kiwi um, has the aspiration to perform on Eden Park, and this is the once in 20 year opportunity in a 50th year of Tamatatini to be able to showcase Māori culture um, at our national stadium. Thank you, Nick. And is that Just the last a, question, Councillor? A supplementary question, Nick, right. and it, it, it goes to, um, you know, revisiting the EY report. Given the incredible significance of, you know, putting Auckland back on the map and the role that Eden Park can uh, play in that, could you use some help from um, Auckland Unlimited and conceivably some reporting to us around that to give us a, a really good context? Well, historically um, and through the constant consenting process, we um, sought um, economic analysis from um, previously AT to assist with our analysis on the economic benefits of events. And um, that can only enhance um, any pitches for future events. So whether it be independent reports or through Auckland Limited, um, we'd welcome the opportunity. Uh, it's an important note that we are working on eight um, areas with Auckland Limited, um, eight uh, work streams associated with the SOSA proposal. Um, so that is work that's going on in the background. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Doug. Commendations, and I reserve my right to speak, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, the second question I have is um, from Councillor Fletcher. Councillor? Thank you, Madam Chair. And I realise today is primarily about the reporting obligations uh, that Eden Park has with us, but it has been touched on already. And I'm interested to know further from what has been um, said to Councillor Walker, given how difficult the conditions are in Auckland right now, especially in hospitality, what specific role can Eden Park see in, in the rebuilding of Auckland. Um, and that's where I really seek your indulgence because I'd like them to, to be more forward-looking um, in, in terms of over and above what they've already told us this morning. What, what role can they play in working with Auckland Unlimited and, and perhaps that inspirational creativity of getting Aucklanders more forward-looking? Well, there's no question, um, and Councillor Walker commented about the imagery of 660 going global, globally but also locally, and anyone who had the opportunity to experience that event um, as, uh, will always talk about being there for that opportunity. Uh, it also adds into the mix is around um, when we had the return of Super Rugby and the sellout fixture and uh, the celebration for essential workers. So there is no question that events provide escapism. Um, people need things to look forward to. And after the last two years of disruption to lives, um, with the borders opening, um, for the first time in a couple of years, we'll see Wallabies fans come to Eden Park to see um, the All Blacks win again. Um, that's good for morale and it's good for um, local business. Um, the local businesses in Kingsland, um, uh, it's been a terribly challenging time. Uh, I'm disappointed to see the likes of Phil's Kitchen close um, because I think it was one of the best restaurants, not only in Kingsland, but in Auckland. And so uh, businesses are making decisions. And the response yesterday from Dominion Road in Kingsland when we announced Ed Sheeran uh, for February 10 was phenomenal um, because it means that there's 50,000 people coming to the precinct. Um, they learn and see and experience the restaurants, cafes and bars pre and post event, and um, they might find a new local. So um, there's a number of ways that our event calendar, whether it be our um, Mali and Pacific strategy and how we can adopt our diversity inclusion strategy and events in that space, um, even to the point of uh, events that perhaps have historically been on the high street and how they can be brought into a stadium, given the current restrictions that we face with uh, 
COVID um, and, and vaccine passports. So um, it's been 12 months of no activity for Eden Park. So now is the chance for us to open our doors and embrace the city and the country. I agree. It's it's heartbreaking to see the for sale sign over Phil's kitchen and yesterday to see um, Fraser's going into receivership. You know, it is, I, I, I don't think people have fully appreciated how important Eden Park has actually been to the community, not not Good just order, Madam Chair. generally. Thank you. Are we, are we in questions or comments? I've let it go. Uh, Councillor Fletcher did um, indicate that she needed to go at 11 o'clock for a funeral, so I've given her licence for that. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Watson, you're next on the question list. Yeah, two uh, related questions, Madam Chair. Uh, th thanks for the presentation, uh, Nick and team. Um, the, the first one goes to this, um, you know, the, the figure of 3,000 people that, uh, that are employed on on game or event days at Eden Park. So, so my, my, my first question on that is, is how um, easily is that that number or those people um, scaled back up again when, when you know, when this very promising calendar um, eventually comes through? You know, I think you said, Nick, you know, quite conceivably the best, you know, looking down the track of the best 12 months in, um, in history. That, that's that's one question. So so how quickly can, you know, all those Aucklanders who rely on Eden Park for their livelihood, you know, be, be you know, geared up again? And, and the second one that, that ties into that, as much as this has been a, you know, a, a dark period for stadiums around the world in, in terms of the COVID, I'm interested in your observations, though, on how stadiums and Eden Park in particular have filled a real need in terms of uh, the health response and and the wider community response. You know, something that a, a dollar value hasn't been put on, but which in terms of catering for our community at a time of need, our stadiums have found a use to, uh, hitherto um, unexplored. So I, I'd be interested in your, your observations on that, uh, you know, albeit that it doesn't necessarily have a financial advantage to, to Eden Park. Uh, thank you for the questions, Councillor Watson. Um, so two parts. The first part, um, we've continued to engage with our casual workforce. They're a very loyal workforce. Um, in addition to that casual workforce, we have approximately 300 volunteers um, that continue to engage with the park irrespective of the uh, limited content and um, we'll, you'll see them this weekend with uh, the Women's World Cup for cricket and uh, them playing a role. Uh, it's an interesting point across the globe and across the ditch. Last night, the MCG uh, welcomed back to AFL football and the caterer had 800 um, staff short uh, across their facility. So um, our strategy has been to engage with our varying work streams, whether it be catering, cleaning, security, traffic management, um, to ensure that um, they are aware that once we come out the other side, uh, we need them and they, and they play a critical role. Um, and I would say they need us as well. Um, once before I made the comment that a casual staff member said a shift at Eden Park is the difference between her grandchild having shoes for the first day of school. Um, in this instance, um, Again, we supported the City Mission Christmas Appeal with over 250 families a day um, for two weeks getting collections leading into Christmas. Um, sadly for us, there were some familiar faces whereby some of our casual workforce um, were indeed um, in the queue and, uh, and, and gaining support. That relationship with the City Mission continues and we currently have um, some food parcels and, and product being stored at Eden Park in areas that are underutilised currently. So we are committed to working with um, the community. There was three local businesses that couldn't operate within their confines, within an indoor space. Uh, so they came and did uh, activities on Eden Park's footprint uh, during the lockdown to ensure that they could continue to operate and keep their doors open. So um, we know that there's an important message there that um, businesses, um, yes, we're a, we, there's three areas that I look to invest in, the facility, our people and the community. There aren't too many businesses um, probably in New Zealand that have that mandate. 
OK, John? Yep, fine, thank you. OK, thank you. I've got no further questions. Um, any comments? No, look, yes, I just... Please, Madam, Chair. Please, Madam Chair. I have Councillor Cooper and then Thank Councillor you. Walker. Thanks for the presentation. Um, and this is a this is um, this item. I just want clarification. We've got a report here, so can I ask our staff questions, or is this just or, or comments about um, the report? Or yes, you can. You can ask um, Mr. Bishop. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. Um, I just wondered, um, do we know the quantum of losses for our regional facilities forecast for this year? I've got a figure of around four million. And how are we going to respond to that? Yep, I'm sorry, asking you... that because it's the other there are other there, you know, because they're in line with other um, significant regional facilities, such as Eden Park. Yeah, look through you, Madam Chair. Look, I can't personally answer that question. I don't have that information in front of me. I'm not sure if there's anyone else from the finance team in this call who might be able to uh, answer that question. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just, I just um, want to comment that I guess that you know, in the wider context, we have many facilities across the region, and we're going to face challenges with the ones we own, and obviously the ones we don't own that we're expected to fund. Thank you. Thank you. And look, just in response, remember that this item is really just about Eden Park. It's not about all our facilities. So the staff support here is just really around the, the Eden Park um, Thank reporting. Thank you. All right. Noted. Noted. Thank you. You're so good at points of order. <laughs> OK. Uh, Councillor Walker, you have a comment, please. Um, sure. I've, I've got a few comments, Madam Chair. I, um, I'll just lead off, um, you know, following on from the observation that Councillor Cooper made. Um, it would be really good uh, from the perspective of uh, transparency to have some um, oversight of the Auckland stadiums and, and, and the like. I mean, I note that um, irrespective of uh, how they might perform, I think we pump in... Um, about 168 million in um, capex and 246 million in um, um, opex uh, supporting those um, venues. So that kind of information would be incredibly useful, and conceivably EY could um, assist in providing some of that. I know I've been asking for it for for some time now. Councillor, um, may I just interrupt for a moment, and I don't wish to be rude, but the point that you and Councillor Cooper are making is not the item that we're discussing. This is not an annual plan discussion around funding of Eden Park. This is an item to talk about Eden Park's report back to us, as they do on a regular basis, about the state of their situation, all right? And anything around any other stadiums or comparisons are to be held for annual plan. I just sure, I, I understand that. I, I guess just like um, uh, Councillor Cooper, who had the opportunity to make the point, I'm just giving a bit of a heads up to the um, to the officers in the upcoming annual plan that it would be really good to have that information, Madam Chair. But but as far as my my comments are, are, are concerned, I... I really want to commend Eden Park for their uh, performance. Obviously, it's been an incredibly troubled um, uh, troubled year. But I make the observation that um, on the initiatives, especially around um, climate change, th they're actually implementing and doing and making very real changes um, against a background where our climate emissions generally in Auckland are otherwise going up. So there is a real opportunity to showcase um, Eden Park across um, not just the stadium experience and uplifting people's spirits and obviously giving some publicity to us um, internationally and lifting um, uh, tourism, you would, you would hope, but also across a number of areas that goes from my perspective to the um, way they showcase our um, our support around uh, Ukraine and, and 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 so on. I mean, those sorts of things I think really exemplify the incredibly important part that Eden Park plays in Auckland in turning around 
our circumstance post-COVID um, going forward. And just going back to the question I asked around um, Auckland Unlimited providing some information around that, I really think that's critical, Madam Chair. It will we happen, really Councillor. Have to have to turn things around and turn things around quickly for our our businesses and our our employment and the spirits that need to be um, lifted. So go Eden Park. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Watson. Yes, thanks. Just a couple of very quick um, comments on the basis of the presentation that we've had us uh, today from Brett, Doug, and and Nick. And the first, I guess, is just to reiterate that notion of uh, really um, congratulating uh, the, the trust in the manner in which they've dealt with uh, you know very very challenging times. As they said to us in their report, stadiums are the the first to close and, and the last to, to reopen. So as, as far as um, businesses go, th they are the most uh, impacted and we've seen that r right around the world. So despite, you know, the very difficult circumstances, I think it's it's a credit to the park that the manner in which they've been able to, to host the events that, that they have done. I guess from my perspective, Madam Chair, what, what has impressed me is during this time of need, this COVID response that has been all encompassing is the way that, you know, Eden Park and like our, some of our other uh, suite of stadiums also, I might add, have really proven themselves to be invaluable in terms of coping with the, um, the demands and the needs of, of the community in, in, in a state of crisis. And, and certainly from my perspective, and as a member of the Civil Defence Committee under Councillor Stewart, um, I've found that very revealing of the, of the role um, stadiums actually perform uh, at times like this. Um, Eden Park certainly, as we've seen from successive reports, go beyond the call of duty in terms of their, uh, you know, their connection to the local community and that kind of uh, public uh, spirited contribution um, that that spans a whole raft of activity. So. Um, Despite the financial difficulties, that's been revealing and that uh, deserves kudos too. I guess finally, uh, Madam Chair, what I would say when I look at the event uh, program that has been signalled to us today going forward, uh, that is really one to, to, I guess, to lift uh, Auckland's spirits over the next 12 to 18 months of the, the, the huge a range of significant events that will occur on top of um, you know, a, a normal kind of Super 15 season and, and, and cricket um, fixtures and all the rest of it. So as much as it's been a hard time, certainly the road ahead looks look, looks promising if, if we can get through the, you know, the present uh, kind of semi-lockdown and emerge the other side, then there's a real opportunity for a bounce back here um, that, that can lift the whole of the city. Um, and, and um, you know, not just the sport enthusiasts, but the people who sustain a, a part of their income out of the activities of Eden Park as well. So um, good times ahead, I hope, and, and, and certainly whatever we can do as a council that uh, encourage that in terms of that wider benefit to Auckland, I think is um, going to be something that uh, we have the opportunity to address, I hope. So thanks very much. Thanks, Councillor. And look, um, I, I should, before I have my closing comments, it's been a bit remiss, I will move a vote of thanks. And I think, is Councillor Fletcher, are you still with us? Chair, yeah, yes, oh, I'm good. still and with Councillor Fletcher, yes, thank you, and appreciate you saying thank you. Hope excuse me, excuse me, Chair, could I just um, make a couple of comments in relation to those very supportive um, comments we've had from Councillor Fletcher and from Councillor Watson in particular? Um, Absolutely. I'll be very quick. Yes, we, we haven't been sitting around drowning our sorrows or woe is me. We have been working very hard and I'd like to acknowledge our Chief Executive, Nick, particularly in that regard. Um, he missed out a few things for the upcoming 12 months. We've And I think in terms of uplifting Aucklanders and New Zealand spirits, we've got um, the Women's Cricket World Cup right now. We've got the Women's Rugby World Cup following that. We've got um, a 660 concert. 
uh, later in the year. We've got Guns N' Roses later in the year, and then we have um, Ed Sheeran in February, and then we roll into the FIFA World Cup. So um, I, I think it is a very exciting time, and there's enough activity, you know, which uses the park's facilities that it will have a meaningful impact on people's well-being and their um, their, their state of mind around the future and how good it looks. I'd also make the point that Eden Park will cater for Ed Sheeran and um, it'll cater for Guns N' Roses. It is the only park uh, in the city that has that breadth of appeal where we can stage different types of events and we're really looking forward to showcasing the park for diff quite different audiences and having great experiences no matter what your favourite uh, music or entertainment uh, is. So. Thank you for the opportunity to appear again today before you, and I just acknowledge again, without your support over the last three years, we would not be in a position where we could be looking forward to these events because we wouldn't have the confidence the park infrastructure would be reliable enough to um, deliver on these activities. Oh, look, thanks, Doug. And look, um, I was going to give some closing comments, but I think it's all been said. We want to thank you terribly much for what you've done, especially through these challenging times of COVID. But actually what you've shown us now is some real excitement for the future in a, in a time of trying to get us out of a very um, challenging at time for everyone. You've got some fantastic events coming for Auckland that will really, I think, boost everyone's spirits. So thank you for your presentation very much. Thank you for your work that you do for Auckland. And and to that, I commend your, uh, the vote of thanks um, to the vote. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. Aye. Carried unanimously. Thank you very much, uh, Nick, Brett, Doug, and thanks, John, as well.